Tonight on News 3 at 10, how a Rock County mail carrier is helping out the homeless community. And the Black Earth Children's Museum is trying to get back to normal following devastating flooding. This is News 3 at 10. A celebration to raise money for Janesville's homeless population took a major step this year. What started as a backyard hangout is now taking on the Rock County Fairgrounds. Rock County reporter Adam Dexter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with how the event's growth is the result of one mail carrier's devotion to the community. Adam. Well, when this Janesville mailman realized there was something wrong on his daily commute, he decided to make a change. And today we checked out the Helping the Homeless fundraiser to find out why this is something he's so passionate about. It's safe to say that Tom Hathaway has never met a stranger. After all, you don't get the nickname the awesome mailman for nothing. Tom has been delivering mail in Janesville for over a decade. During that time, he's made a handful of friends. I deliver mail on my own route. So my, all my customers, almost 500 stops, I consider my neighbors. But also during that time, Tom says he's seen the severity of homelessness in the city. You see a lot that most people don't realize it happens. I've had customers um, tell me they're going to live in their car. You know, I've ha had, I've seen people laying beside a, an abandoned house. Tom routinely would have friends over for backyard barbecues, so one day he got the idea. Why not turn it into something to help our community? And for the last five years, Tom has been doing just that, throwing parties to raise money for Janesville's homeless population. Until recently, the party got too big for his backyard, and they had to move it to the Rock County Fairgrounds. Today, the fifth annual Helping the Homeless fundraiser, with a raffle, silent auction, live music, and animal adoptions, with the end goal of raising money for nonprofits in Janesville's community that serve the homeless population. Tom says raising awareness of the issue is one of his biggest goals. This is happening. Even in Janesville, we're, we're, we're not a huge city, but at 67,000 or wherever we are, it's an issue, it's a problem. Proceeds from today's fundraiser will go to benefit the Gifts Men's Center, Rot Net Health Rock County, and Project 1649. Not bad for something that started as a get together in a backyard. Definitely not. Thank you so much, Adam. All right, let, well, let's turn it over to Dave Caulfield for a look at your first alert forecast. Thanks. Hi, Dave. Amanda, it was a very nice day today. A little bit on the breezy side and a little bit on the cool side, but overall, not bad, not too much to complain about. And that's the case tonight in downtown Madison on the Edgewater Skycam, looking at mostly clear skies and temperatures falling through the 60s into the 50s. Doppler track is quiet. It will remain that way into tomorrow and for much of next week. I don't see any rain showers affecting southern Wisconsin. Temperatures are in the mid 50s, still a few 60s hanging on across southern Wisconsin. Wind speeds have died down as they did last night. So this is going to be the trend as we head into tomorrow out of the northeast at about 8 to 15 miles per hour. Temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours will reach lows in the upper 40s for the first time in over three months. Then temperatures will be off and running through the 60s with highs once again in the low 70s and partly sunny skies. We'll talk about warmer temperatures into next week in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Dave. We've heard so many stories of those who lost everything from the floods. While a lot of businesses can't reopen with how much damage they've received, there are some lucky ones. Jamie Press takes us inside the Children's Museum in Black Earth to show us how they're overcoming the flood damage. The beloved Children's Museum in Black Earth has been closed for several weeks now. After pumping out more than 300,000 gallons of water, they're rebuilding. While so many other businesses have closed permanently from flood damage, Karen Carlock is too determined to do that. So we opened in June of 2017, and then since then we've had over 15,000 people come through our doors. We have over 350 memberships, so it's been really successful beyond what I ever imagined. A fun space for kids, birthday parties. This space has been a dream come true for Karen and thousands of others. I love hearing the parents say, it's just so easy to bring my kids here and they have so much fun. But before the fun can start up again, they've still got some work to do. And it actually came, um, it came all the way up to this step and you can see the grime on there. So it filled the entire basement and then came up the stairs. So, um, 
we just, you know, <laughs> by about like a foot and a half, we avoided having water on the main level and hitting all the exhibits. Just barely saved from the mess of floodwaters, all of the exhibits went untouched. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the first thing I thought was, oh, I'm so thankful it didn't reach our exhibit level. But the damage to the basement was still enough to close up shop for weeks. Um, this was actually a finished office space, all wired for desks and computers and such, so it all had to be gutted. You can see there's even still some water on the floors. It, it had a much larger impact than I thought, even though it was all kind of um, all in the basement level. The basement is much more than just museum storage space. The community's food pantry kept many cans of food on these shelves, which are obviously gone now. But at the end of this month, the 29th, there's gonna be a big welcome back for the food pantry and the museum. But we're committed to getting the building back up and operational, and we wanna see um, the food pantry and the museum continue to, to succeed. An end of summer celebration and a grand reopening to welcome back the space that serves many in Black Earth as a second home. In Black Earth, Jamie Perez, WISC News 3. As Jamie mentioned, September 29th is the grand reopening day. They're planning to have a big celebration at the museum with new exhibits. Sixth grade athletes from Reedsburg and Wanakee met on the football field today in a scene of true sportsmanship. The city of Reedsburg suffered significant flooding last month and the impact has touched the friends and family of the Beavers teammates. The coach of the Wanakee Warriors team was also affected by the disaster when his father lost everything during flooding in Mazomany. So when he learned their team would be facing Reedsburg, he announced a goods drive for victims of the flooding. To the Reedsburg coach, the act in encapsulated the spirit of the game. Football is a part of it, but it's more about, you know, teamwork, uh, respect for other people, you know, and just uh, being a competitor. And, you know, like I said, with bringing in, you know, what Wanakee had done, it's just, it's pretty special. In just 24 hours, the goods drive filled an entire garage full of donations. New at 10 tonight, a Grant County deputy is recovering after he was hit by an alleged intoxicated driver while he was on the side of the road. 28-year-old Paige Rice was arrested for OWI causing injury. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says a deputy was removing a large pile of hay from Highway 151 near Eagle Road in Jamestown early this morning. As he was walking back, a car crashed into the back of his squad car. The deputy was taken to the hospital for minor injuries. Rice was not hurt. Both cars sustained heavy damage. A Madison gardening store was robbed last night. According to the Madison Police Department, officers were sent to the Fair Oaks Nursery and Garden Center around 5:40 for a call about a theft. Employees told them they were at the back of the store getting ready to leave when they noticed a young man running out the front door. They found their cash register smashed and keys to a work vehicle and cash all missing. A kitchen fire in Fitchburg caused about $50,000 worth of damage. Firefighters rushed to a structure fire on Smithfield Drive around 3 o'clock yesterday. When they got there, they found heavy smoke coming from a window. Everyone in the building got out safely. Officials believe the cause of the fire was inattentive cooking. In Rock County today, golfers were supporting research on childhood cancer at the hole-in-one for Harlow fundraising golf scramble. Harlow Phillips is a young girl suffering from neuroblastoma. Since her family found out about her diagnosis a year ago, the community has rallied in support behind her. Today's golf event is one way her family can help fund research and keep hope strong for other children affected. We are feeling a lot of hope and a lot of um, promise. Um, unfortunately, research costs a lot of money, and so we're trying to make an event that's going to raise a significant amount of money, but it's also going to be fun for people. The top scoring golfer at the event had the chance to win $1 million if they scored a final hole in one. Another fundraiser today is benefiting a Haitian orphanage. The Capitol Brewery hosted the annual Sunshine Soul Festival. Attendees drank beer and enjoyed some music, all to help the Mercy House Orphanage in Haiti. Organizers say that recovery is still underway after the catastrophic earthquake in 2010 in Haiti and that every dollar helps. Everybody doing their share is just made a difference in each and every one of these kids' lives. And I, I don't even know how, how to express what that means to these kids. Um, 
they don't really know who's all supporting them, but they know that they get to eat every day. This is the eighth year the event benefited that orphanage. Chili enthusiasts from across the country gathered in Edgerton today for the largest chili cook-off in the upper Midwest. This is Chili Mania's 29th year. Attendees can taste more than 60 types of chili and vote on their favorite. However, a more formal judging is also done, and the winner of that competition will go on to the International Chili Competition in Texas. But organizers say this event hasn't always been this big. Chili was just uh, the, the passion of the founders and uh, it's just kind of grown over the years from a small festival to what you see today with 6,000 people here on the Saturday afternoon. The cook-off also acts as a fundraiser for Edgerton High School scholarships. This year the group gave out scholarships to seven seniors totaling more than $17,000. Food lovers, but not necessarily meat lovers, gathered for Vegan Fest in Madison today. The event invited attendees to try vegan cuisine, look at vegan products, and learn more about an animal byproduct free lifestyle. Vegans from across the state were concerned when organizers of the annual Mad City Vegan Fest said they wouldn't be continuing that event. So organizers came together to pull off this new Vegan Fest, which they hope becomes an annual tradition and not just for vegans. Really want to stress that everyone is welcome to these events. So vegans definitely come, people who are veg curious come, and even just people who like good food and want to um, learn some new things from our speakers. So um, it's really for everyone, and we see all types of people coming in. Organizers say hundreds of attendees came to enjoy the fest today. Coming up on News 3 at 10, California wildfires continue. We have the latest from firefighters next on News 3 at 10.
About a dozen large wildfires are burning tonight in California. The state's firefighting agency, Cal Fire, says it's running out of money in the middle of a busy fire season. Among the immediate challenges is the Delta Fire in Northern California. California. Carter Evans has the latest. Drivers on I-5 in Northern California got a big scare this week as towering flames raged on both sides of the highway. It's hot. Whoa. Feel the heat? The Delta fire has scorched nearly 58 square miles since it began near Lake Shasta on Wednesday. As the fire burned through dense forest, flames shot up to 300 feet into the air, spreading so fast some truckers were forced to abandon their rigs and flee on foot. Now, a 45-mile stretch of the interstate is closed in both directions, forcing drivers to take a 100-mile detour on winding mountain roads jammed with traffic. Well, I've been delayed a day and a half already. It's a big problem for truckers transporting perishables like bananas. By the time I go, bananas will be too ripe and the company will be upset. So far, the state has been hit with almost 5,500 wildfires this year, burning more than one and a quarter million acres. The state's fire agency says it's almost out of money, spending $432 million to fight fires through August. And the official fire season has only just begun. Cal Fire says it has just $11 million left in its annual budget, but the agency will likely need an additional $234 million to fight fires through the end of the year. Carter Evans, CBS News, Los Angeles. Closer to home tonight, a local family farm will soon open their annual corn maze for the season. But this year, they're getting some help. Culver's has picked the Meyer family farm as one of five in the country to represent Wisconsin in the Thank You Farm Farmers Project. The Meyer family farm changes up their corn maze every year, posting questions inside to help people get through the maze. They were supposed to be open this weekend, but the rain got in the way. So the Meyer family hopes to open next weekend. That sounds fun. Something you would like, Dave, since uh, you like all the escape rooms. I stuff. do. I really do love corn mazes, and it really felt kind of like corn maze weather for yeah. some of us today, because a little bit on the cool side, yeah, temperatures would probably be in the oh. 40s and 50s during that time, but temperatures could dip into the 40s overnight into tomorrow morning. Doppler track is quiet, so I don't think the rain will be a problem into really the next seven days or so. And the rain has moved well to the south and east. High pressure controlling our weather. So again, really not worried about Doppler track being active anytime soon. However, the opposite is going on in the tropics. We are tracking lots in the tropics, both in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. For the Pacific, we are tracking Hurricane Olivia. It's actually heading close to Hawaii, so we're watching that very closely. Florence is actually not a hurricane just yet, but it is very, very close and will probably be a hurricane before you know it. And we've actually had a couple more tropical storms form in the Atlantic. We've had Isaac and Helene, and both of them could be hurricanes pretty shortly as well. Usually when we talk about late August, early September, that's the peak of Atlantic hurricane season. So we are seeing that come to pass this time around. Live look in Madison, no tropical systems to worry about just yet. On the WISC TV Skycam, we're looking at mostly clear skies and similar story on the Edgewater Skycam, 57 degrees northeast wind at seven miles per hour. High temperatures today. We actually did make it into the 70s for much of southern Wisconsin. Pretty surprisingly, I think it's because that northeast breeze helped us feel a little bit cooler outside. 66 the high in Waukesha, 72 in Watertown. Temperatures right now about 15 degrees cooler than that. All of us basically in the mid 50s, except for Janesville, still in the 60s. Dew points are feeling very nice outside, so very comfortable air sticking around into next week. Wind speeds out of the north and east still, but a little bit less at about 8 to 15 miles per hour. High temperatures are actually getting warmer as we head into the middle of September. We'll actually see temperatures in the mid to upper 80s in some spots, and it could feel like the 90s by the time we get to next weekend and next Sunday. But this Sunday, low humidity, great weather to do outdoor activities, partly sunny and breezy, comfortable temperatures, and that includes if you are a um, a better athlete than I am, or I will ever be for the Ironman triathlon tomorrow, starting off in the 50s, getting into the lower 70s. Tonight, we're actually bottoming out in the low, um, low 50s and upper 40s. If we do get into the 40s, it will be the first time 
in more than three months. Tomorrow, partly sunny and breezy with highs in the low 70s. Staying pretty quiet, a few clouds here and there, but that moisture it's associated with what once was Tropical Storm Gordon continues to move out, so really not too many clouds hanging around for tomorrow or for Monday. Temperatures in the low 70s and mid 70s for each day and bottoming out in the 40s, so pretty consistent. And as I mentioned a couple days ago, thankfully boring weather coming to us over the next week. Lots of sunshine for the work week. Then as we head into next weekend, we're looking at things getting a little bit warmer, a little bit more humid. By the time we get to next Monday and Tuesday, that's when some shower and thunderstorm chances return to southern Wisconsin. Early outlooks don't really paint this as a big deal, so we'll continue to enjoy this nice weather while we have it. It's nice to see all those little sunshines. Yeah, we want to keep it as long as we can. <laughs> yes, thank you, Dave. Gio Gonzalez makes his Brewers debut. Those highlights coming up next in sports. News 3. All right, so lessons that we should have learned from last week. Do not turn the ball over. Both Alex Hornibrook and Jonathan Taylor losing the ball once against Western Kentucky. And despite making those mistakes again, both guys overcoming adversity today. First half action here. Jonathan Taylor losing the ball inside the 10-yard line here. But luckily, New Mexico can't really do anything with it. So later, JT redeeming himself with this 16-yard run. 
right on our cameras into the end zone. One of his three on the day. Badgers up 10-7. Second half here, Wisconsin still without Quintez Cifes and Danny Davis. So A.J. Taylor taking the load on his back, really emerging from the pack now. 10-yard touchdown for him, 24-7 Wisconsin. Fourth quarter here, Badgers ahead by a lot. So we get a little Danny Vandenboom sighting. Short pass to Taj Mustafa. Badgers off to a 2-0 start this season. Jonathan Taylor leading the way in yards on the ground. He's the eighth player in school history to run for more than 250 yards in a game. The first since Melvin Gordon. And with more on JT and the other Taylor, that's AJ Taylor, of course, here's Jay Wilson at Camp Randall. A lot of you may play golf clubs that are tailor-made. Well, you might say that today's win for the Badgers was tailor-made, at least on offense. A.J. Taylor, the wide receiver, had a career day with 134 yards receiving and a touchdown. And Jonathan Taylor, the running back, a career day as well. 253 and three scores. I feel like I did, did some good things on the ground, but there are still some things that I can clean up. And that's why you work during the week. That's why you work all week to get to the game and put it into action. The biggest thing that I've worked on is just like focusing up and uh, using the other guys' as energy and really just playing with the purpose, which is playing for the other the guy next to me. Defensively, the Badgers gave up a long touchdown drive on the first drive of the game to New Mexico, but then they were pretty good the rest of the day. Scott Nelson's interception was described as a turning point. The big swing came on, on Scott's pick. You know, I think Gink had some pressure on it, and then the offense scores off of that. But I was, I was proud of the, the response, the way guys individually handled things and uh, collectively. I'm just trying to, to be dependable where my teammates can count on me. Be able to make plays for them to be like, okay, I can do this to Scott and not have to kind of make up for me. Like, oh, I don't know if I can trust him, but just being able for them to trust you, um, I think that's, that was the biggest thing going into this season. So the Badgers get the job done. They go to 2-0, and but still plenty of room for improvement. And we'll see where that improvement may take them as BYU comes to Camp Randall for a 2-30 start next Saturday here at Camp Randall Stadium. With the Badgers, Jay Wilson, News 3 Sports. Other action around the conference today. Rutgers at the shoe visiting fourth-ranked Ohio State. Lots of Dwayne Haskins showing off his arm today. 38-yard rocket to Johnny Dixon down the middle. 7-0 Buckeyes. Haskins throwing for 233 yards and four touchdowns today. Still in the first half, Tate Martell winds up, launches that to Terry McLaurin for the 51-yard touchdown, and the Buckeyes roll 52-3. 21st ranked Michigan hosting Western Michigan today. First half, Chris Evans with the ball. He'll go to his left, finding a little hole there for the 27-yard score and 21-0 Wolverines in the lead. Later, Shea Patterson airing it out down the middle to Nico Collins. He's there for the catch. 44-yard touchdown. Michigan winning big at the big house, 49-3 to the final. Well, Gio Gonzalez making his first start in a Brewers uniform tonight. The former Nationals pitcher was 0-3 with a 8.70 ERA in his four, final four starts with Washington, but none of that tonight. The offense helping him out considerably, starting with Travis Shaw in the first, up and back for a solo shot, 1-0 Brewers. Fast forward to the fifth inning here, Christian Yelich, he would go the same way too. Back out to center field, 4 nothing Brewers at that point. Gonzalez giving up one run on three hits. He pitched five and two-thirds innings, and the Brewers win 4-3. to three. We'll be right back.
going to get a little chilly tonight by our standards lately. Yeah, <laughs> with temperatures dipping into the upper 40s, yeah, especially if you're going out for maybe an early morning run or walk. Yeah. You're definitely going to want to need a sweatshirt for sure. And temperatures are in the low 70s for highs tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine with a little bit more cloud cover. More sun on the way for next week. All right, thank you and thanks for joining us. Have a great night. 6 a.m. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.